Hi, Dr. Windish again from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Welcome to our educational series for medical professionals. Today we're going to be talking about the pediatric chest exam or cardiovascular exam and we're going to exploit my son who was kind enough to get RSV for us so that we could have some physical findings. So the first thing you want to do when you're doing a chest exam on a child is get them so that you can actually see their chest which means you're going to have to remove the 47 layers of clothing including the onesie so that you can actually see their chest and you want to just observe them breathe. Notice that there's no retractions intercostally and as we flip him around, no subcostal and no supraclavicular retractions, no use of accessory neck muscles, no nasal flaring. Most importantly, remember your McCarthy observation scale. Child looks good, he's awake, he's alert, he's talking, well, babbling. His skin tone is good, or skin turgor is good, skin color is good, he's not whiny. And mucous membranes look good, eyes aren't sunken, so child is not ill appearing. If you don't remember your McCarthy observation scale, sometimes called the Yale scale, if you're doing general pediatrics, do recommend you look that one back up. That can be found in Nelson's textbook, Pediatrics. So, yeah, Ben, that goes on your chest. So that would be so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to look at his precordium. We notice that there's no activity in the precordium. We're going to feel for thrills. There aren't any. Dabba, 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 dabba. Now we're going to auscultate. So we're going to lay you back. And we're going to auscultate. When you're auscultating for heart sounds, I strongly recommend using the bell. Everybody gets to be kind of fixated on the diaphragm, but you miss the lower intensity chest sounds, or the lower frequency chest sounds. Specifically, you're going to miss some of the low frequency murmurs. Remember, you can turn the bell into a diaphragm simply by sealing the bell off on the chest. So we're going to auscultate over the major four areas. Because this is a child and they tend to refer sounds, you probably wind up auscultating in multiple areas. We will also auscultate the lungs anteriorly and posteriorly. Obviously this is a child checking for fremitus, egophony. <coughs> yeah, not going to happen. Because I somehow don't think he's going to say 99 for us. If we're really concerned, we can look for JVD if we're looking for heart disease. You'll notice there is no jugular venous distension. And of course, we're going to check for spleen and liver. And there's no hepatosplenomegaly as well. Um, most important sign and symptom of heart failure in an infant is failure to thrive. So we've already weighed Ben. And his weight, although he's skinny, is good. And I think that gives us pretty much our cardiovascular exam. Uh, if I needed to, I could percuss the heart. If I needed to, I could percuss the lungs. Uh, we're not going to percuss the heart borders today, and we're not going to percuss the lungs. And Pat's hinting that I needed to do something. What have I forgotten, Pat? Do you want to toss in the pulses? You can check pulses as well. Um, I'm actually kind of keeping that under the extremity exam as opposed to cardiovascular, but it's where body parts sort of overlap. Anyway, this is Dr. Kevin Windish. If we can be of assistance, please give us a call, 775-359-7111. If you'd like to schedule a rotation with us or refer us a patient, give us a call. We'll see you next time.